There used to be a game I used to borrow from the local video store many moons ago by the name of RoboWarrior. When I first got the internet and emulation became a thing, it's one of the games I wanted to play again, but just couldn't recall the name. I accidentally stumbled upon it a few years later after randomly choosing ROMs to play, and remembered how much fun the game is. When I bought the Retron, it was one of the first games I purchased along with it. Playing it again for this review, I remember both why I loved the game, but also kind of hate it too. I can't really tell you the story of Robo Warrior because I just don't know it. The opening scene that shows if you don't press a button shows a planet that turns a red hue, and then it moves to a peaceful scene with grass swaying in the breeze. Then it's back to the title screen. I can only imagine that the story has something to do with some evil force corrupting this planet, and it's up to your cyborg-like protagonist to eradicate it. The game plays very similarly to the more popular Bomberman series. Your cyborg can drop bombs that blow away the environment, for the purpose of finding a whole slew of power-ups. These items range from a whole bunch of usefulness, such as the required chalice that lets you leave the stage to extra life, bombs, points, candles, and so on. You can access your inventory by pressing a simple key, select, so it's not like the gameplay is overly complicated. It can just get a bit repetitive. So here's how it works. The cyborg runs in multiple directions, able to fire in the cardinal ones by pressing A. He can drop a bomb by pressing B, and what's nice about this is that he'll be flung back a bit when setting one. Unlike in Bomberman, the blast isn't a linear path of fire, instead opting for a standard round explosion. You can of course get caught in your own blast, and if it doesn't outright kill you, it will damage you heavily. It's still nice to be thrown backwards when setting down one of your bombs, as it gives you that extra second to run away as the bombs do detonate considerably quicker than the ones in Bomberman. What you are ultimately looking for are the two items, a chalice looking thing and a key. Some stages will loop indefinitely until you find the chalice. The key will unlock the exit. Until you find these items, you'll just have to keep bombing the world in order to find them. Of course, your supply of bombs is limited. Objects that you destroy may reveal a bomb power up to give you 10 additional bombs to add to your supply and killing enemies will show an orb that will give you a single bomb. Most of the times, enemies will continually spawn from off screen, so you will never really run out. You do also get a life bar. Blowing yourself up is a quick way to drop it, but enemies will do damage to you as well. In addition, it will steadily drain on its own, acting as a timer. There are two power ups that can replenish your life, one of which being an instant small boost, and the other going in your inventory to fully recharge your cyborg at a time you choose. Stock up if you can as you'll need it. As you're blowing everything apart, you might come across a stairway that will bring you down into a pitch black underground cavern. Think of this almost like a bonus section. You'll find tons of power ups, but the catch is that, as I said, it's dark as in you can't see anything other than the enemies. Even the exit stairway is hidden. So if you decide to go down here, make sure you have a good supply of candles or even a lamp that can light up the entire room instead of just a small area around the cyborg. The biggest problem with the game is the difficulty. This game is tough as balls. The furthest I've ever made it as a kid was I think stage 2-2, and supposedly there are bosses, but I haven't seen them other than the demo scene shown at the start. Parts of the game can be cryptic, such as needing to find the chalice and the key, and even this area here where it looks like there's an impassable barrier. I looked up a guide, and come to find out you're supposed to bomb the same area 3 or 4 times before it lets you through. How the hell was I supposed to know that? And if you don't memorize where the chalice or key is, you will have to literally bomb every inch of the map. You also have to watch out for water. Although you can use a life raft to navigate larger pools, short streams can be walked across, but you need to be quick. If you're not across in about a second, you'll sink and die. But again, how was I supposed to know this? Thank god there are infinite continues. Sure, you have to start at the beginning of the stage with about half of your bomb supply, but at least you get to keep all of your items in your inventory. The graphics do the job, I suppose. I don't know how much detail we can really put in a game where you blow up the majority of the world, but hey, it works, right? As for the soundtrack, it's not bad. The main theme is catchy, and I've had the song pop up in my head at random points, even when I haven't played the game in a while. So after all of this, is Robo Warrior a game I would recommend? It's hard to say. If you're a Bomberman fan and want something that isn't just blow up all enemies, then sure, it's a fun diversion that sort of expands on the Bomberman formula a bit. If you're not a fan, you may not find as much enjoyment as I did. 
It's fun for a weekend's play, but be prepared to be frustrated from time to time, as we're going to have to either bomb every inch of the world, or get lucky to find the items required to leave the stage. It's also a cheap game, so if you have hardware that can play the physical cart, it's a worthy game to add to the collection. Final score? 4 out of 7. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.